Hello, I'm Jaron, and in this video we're going to be looking at Ben Boomer's track Beyond Beliefs. For the purposes of this video, I put together my own rendition of the track. Let's have a listen. Let's visually analyze Ben Boomer's Beyond Beliefs through Ableton's Spectrum device and take note of three things. Number one, there's a prominent frequency at 47 Hz, a G flat note. This is the first note of the sub bass line. Number two, after four bars, a new peak emerges at 35 Hz, a D flat note. This is the second note of the sub bass line. Number three, through the whole song, there is a peak at 53 Hz, an A flat note. This is the kick, and here we can see a key to getting a clean low end. Put your kick and sub bass on different frequencies. The kick plays A flat, the sub bass plays G flat and D flat. Three different notes. No overlapping, therefore no unnecessary boom or mud. The chord progression in Beyond Beliefs is called the plagal cadence. This progression has been widely used for hundreds of years and is just a fancy way to describe moving from the four chord to the one chord. In the key of C major, that would be an F major chord to a C major chord. All the notes of the parent scale work well melodically over the two chords. When you add reverb and echo, it creates an epic cinematic sound. Beyond Beliefs uses a plagal cadence in the key of D flat. G flat major for four bars, resolving to D flat major for four bars. We'll use Ableton's analog to create the sub bass sound. First, let's input our notes into the piano roll. Take the plagal cadence chords and remove everything but the bottom notes. These are the root notes of the chords. Shorten the second note by two beats and insert a B flat in the gap. This note turns the bass line back around to the beginning of the loop. Back to analog. Click anywhere in the rightmost panel. In the settings that appear in the middle of the device, find voices. By default, this is set to eight voices. Given that muddiness is the natural enemy of sub bass, we will change the voices setting to mono. This makes it so there will only be one note coming out of the synth at a time. Next, let's change our wave shape. Click anywhere in the oscillator one panel in the top left. Change the wave shape to the square wave. Now, let's dial in the filter. Click anywhere in the top middle panel. Set the filter type to LP24. When we lower the filter's frequency, the sound above the frequency parameter gets cut off. Set this all the way to 150 Hz to eliminate everything above the bass register. Set resonance to 20%. This determines the amplitude of the cutoff point. By default, the envelope setting will be set to 4. This applies motion determined by the attack, decay, sustain, and release parameters to the filter. For a Ben Boomer style sub bass, set it to 0. We want to save this kind of motion for the melodic bass. Set drive to SYM1. If you are wanting a beefier analog sound, try some of the other drive modes. Let's dial in the amplifier envelope. Click anywhere in the Amplifier 1 panel. Set the attack to 5 milliseconds, the decay to 626 milliseconds, sustain to 0.5, sustain time to infinite, and the release to 500 milliseconds. Set the level of Amplifier 1 to negative 8. Let's touch up the sound with EQ8. 
Add a four times high pass at 25 hertz with a Q of 0.4 to remove any excess rumble. Then add a two decibel boost to the upper end of the bass range at 100 hertz with a Q of 1.23. This will emphasize the second octave harmonics of the bass note. Now we've got our sub bass. For the kick, we'll use Ableton's kick drum synth. By electronic music standards, the kick in Beyond Beliefs is pretty lightweight. It has a full low end and a prominent transient click, but relies on the sub bass part to provide most of the heaviness. First, we'll make a one beat loop and draw one note in the piano roll to get our four on the floor pattern. As we saw when we analyzed Beyond Beliefs in Ableton Spectrum, the kick is placed at an A flat at around 53 hertz, where it doesn't clash with any of the sub bass notes. Set pitch to 51.9 hertz. Decay to 5%, overtones to 10.2% so that the sound reaches a little higher into the spectrum, and activate click. Use drum bus to further develop the sound. Set drive to 0%. We want to preserve the lightweight pulse of Beyond Belief's kick. Activate compression. This will help glue the pieces of the kick together. Set damp to 12k to subdue the click. Set boom to 100% to boost the bottom end. Set frequency to the kick pitch, which is 51.9 Hz, and reduce the decay to 20%. Use EQ8 to polish the whole kick sound. Add a 4 times high pass set to 40 Hz. This will remove any unnecessary rumble. Add a six decibel cut at 100 Hertz with a Q of 1.5. This will make some room in the mix for other bass elements. Add a small one decibel cut at 1K to subdue the click transient. Reduce the whole top end starting at 5K by three decibels. The melodic bass line in Ben Bomer's Beyond Beliefs is built around the interval of a perfect fifth. A perfect fifth is seven semitones. Guitarists will know this interval as a power chord, appropriately named because as we hear in this song, it has a powerful, courageous feeling. As you can see with this motif that is based on the bass melody in Beyond Belief, the bass line starts on B flat, then jumps up by seven semitones, landing on F. The distance between these two notes is a perfect fifth. Then, between the next two notes, A flat moves down by seven semitones, landing on D flat. This distance is also a perfect fifth. The last notes also form a perfect fifth, although there is a note in between. Throughout the song, the pattern constantly changes, but keeps revolving around a perfect fifth. In the second phrase, there is a different starting note and a different ending, but the overall shape remains the same. In the third phrase, the overall shape stays the same, but we lose some of the perfect fifths until the end where there are three stacked on top of one another. Small variations prevent a track from getting repetitive or boring without having to change the progression or the groove. If thinking about intervals is new to you, the perfect fifth is a great place to start. It's a useful interval for approaching melodic jumps, especially in the bass. The melodic bass sound in Ben Bomer's Beyond Beliefs is fairly simple, but takes advantage of a few small modulations that bring it to life. We will use wavetable instead of analog to create the sound because it is a bit easier to apply modulations in wavetable. First, let's set the polyphony to monophonic so that the synth only produces one note at a time. Deactivate oscillator 2. For oscillator 1's wavetable, choose basics and basic shapes. Now, change the position of the wavetable to 55%.
Next, adjust the amplifier envelope. Change the loop mode to trigger so that all segments are played once a note is received. Set attack to 2 milliseconds, decay to 589 milliseconds, sustain all the way down, and the release to 5 milliseconds. Let's set up the filter. There's two filters at our disposal here. We'll use filter 1 to control the low end. Set the mode to high pass 12 decibels. Set the frequency to 225 hertz. And the resonance to 35%. The second filter will control the top end. Activate filter 2. Set it to low pass 12 decibels and the circuit to OSR. Set the frequency to 944 Hz. And the resonance to 40%. These two filters combined creates a band pass. In the matrix, apply velocity modulation to both filters. This can be done by first clicking on the parameter and then entering the value in its row. Set the velocity modulation of both filters frequency to 25. Set the velocity modulation of the resonance of filter 2 to 35. Now the filter cutoff corresponds with no velocity. Next, we'll give each note its own motion by using Envelope 2 to control Filter 2's cutoff. Set Attack to 10 milliseconds, Decay to 282 milliseconds, Sustain to 0%, and Release to 1.5 milliseconds. In the matrix, set Envelope 2's modulation of Filter 2's frequency to 5. Now, there's quick subtle movement to the brightness of each note. Now we'll use LFO1 to accentuate the contour of the whole phrase. Set the sync mode to subdivisions, deactivate retrigger, set the shape of LFO1 to triangle, rate to two bars, amount to 70%, shape to 0%, and offset to 270%. Now set LFO's modulation of filter 2's frequency to 25. The filter is more open for the first notes of the phrase and then closes for the last notes, making them darker and quieter. Use drum bus to get a little closer to the melodic bass sound in Ben Boomer's Beyond Beliefs. First, set the dry wet mix to 5% so that the effect has only a subtle influence on the sound. Activate compression. Set drive to 20%. Set damp to 10k to tame the crisp high end. Set transients to 0.5 to give the attacks of the notes more definition. And set boom to 20% to give the bottom end a little more weight. The melodic bass requires echo and reverb to avoid sounding lifeless. Add echo. Set both the left and right delays to dotted eighth. The feedback to 70%. And the dry wet to 20%. Set the high pass filter to 111 Hz and the low pass filter to 3000 Hz. Raise the resonance of the low pass filter to 0.12. In order to make it so that we only hear the echoes once the bass is done playing the phrase, enable ducking and reduce the threshold to negative 48 with the release of 20 milliseconds. Now when the bass melody is done playing, the echoes become audible. Add a hybrid reverb. We will be using only the convolution reverb. Set to bigger spaces and the impulse response to shimmering sky LR. Set the size to 165%. Set pre delay to 5 milliseconds and the dry wet to 25%. This will give us a nice long stereo reverb tail, but won't overwhelm the bass sound. Lastly, switch over to the reverb's EQ. Since we're dealing with the bass sound, let's accentuate the higher parts of the reverb tail and reduce the lows. 
Cut the lows at 110 Hz with a slope of 24 decibels. Boost the first octave at 219 Hz by 3 decibels with a Q curve of 2.11. Boost the next octave at 497 Hz, twice as much by 6 decibels, with a slightly wider Q of 1.23. Lastly, boost the rest of the top end starting at 912 Hz by 4 decibels. In Beyond Beliefs, Ben Boomer uses a type of reverse delay that builds as the song progresses. Use spectral time to get a similar effect. Spectral time freezes audio and allows you to crossfade between the freezes as well as repeat them with its own dedicated delay. Set to re-trigger, change to sync mode, Activate the large freeze button so it's blue. Set crossfade to 50%. Set delay mode to notes. And the delay time to 3 eighths. Set feedback to 85%. Stereo to 100%. and tilt to 229 milliseconds. Now set resolution to ultra. Automate the dry wet parameter where you want to apply the effect. The 4 to 1 chord progression in Ben Boomer's Beyond Beliefs allows for the use of common tones, which are notes that you can hold while the chords change underneath. The two held notes are the 1 and 5 of the scale, D flat and A flat, which form a perfect fifth. As the bass note moves from the root of the 4 chord, G flat, to the root of the 1 chord, D flat, the notes above stay the same. This creates a smooth gliding feeling, as these notes agree with both chords, though their relationship to each chord changes. Now that the chords follow the progression in Ben Boomer's Beyond Beliefs, we need to give them some rhythm. The pad plays a steady stream of 16th notes that emphasize certain beats. The pattern of the emphasized beats are 7 16th notes, 3 16th notes, 4 16th notes, and 2 16th notes. Next, we will maintain the rhythm while slightly shifting some notes so that there is some melodic motion. Use arpeggiator to fill in the rest of the 16th notes. Change the rate to 1 16th and gate to 94%. Turn on the often overlooked velocity setting and set decay to 11.5 milliseconds, and target to 1. Now, after each chord is triggered, the repeated notes fall at the rate set by the decay parameter to the velocity set by the target parameter. Lastly, change the style to chord trigger. This triggers the entire chord rather than the broken arpeggiations. Ben Bomer's Beyond Beliefs has a great rhythmic pad sound. It sounds like he chopped up and manipulated a sample that included high-pitched percussion, a piano, and some synth. Instead of trying to replicate the sound exactly, I opted to try to capture the essence of the sound with a wavetable patch. First, set wavetable to polyphonic mode and set voices to the maximum, which is 8. Deactivate oscillator 2. Set the wavetable to basics and basic shapes. This is the same wavetable we used for the melodic bass. Many of the sounds of Progressive House are built around these classic, simple, analog wave shapes. Next, let's dial in the amplifier envelope. Set the attack to 7 milliseconds, decay to 438 milliseconds, sustain to negative 24, and release to 110 milliseconds. Next, set the wavetable position to 12%. Change the effect mode to classic, set sync to 1.6%. 
Note modulation allows the pitch of the note being played to affect the parameter. Set the note modulation of oscillator 1's position to 15, the note modulation of oscillator 1's pulse width to 5, and the note modulation of oscillator 1's sync to 8. Now as we trigger higher and lower notes, these parameters will move up and down as well. Let's move to the filter section. Set filter 1 to bandpass 12 decibels and change the circuit to OSR. Set the frequency to 220 Hz and the drive to 0.5. Next, activate filter 2 and set to low pass mode 12 decibels. Change the circuit to PRD, which also gives us a drive control. Set frequency to 6K, the resonance to 5%, and the drive to 2.6. Now we can modulate the filter. Set the note modulation of filter 1 and filter 2's frequency to 100. Now as we play higher and lower notes, the filter follows its motion. Activate unison to enhance the stereo field. Set unison mode to position spread. Each note will now be panned randomly left and right. Set the note modulation of unison to 50 so that the higher the note, the more it will be panned. Set the velocity modulation of unison to 50 so that the louder a note is triggered, the more it will be panned. Lastly, set up LFO1. Change the LFO shape to triangle, set rate to 0.12 Hz, amount to 100%, the shape to 0%, and offset to 0. Turn on re-trigger mode and apply an attack of 50 milliseconds so that the LFO has a short fade in. Now set the LFO1 modulation of oscillator 1's pulse width to 20. Let's add some texture and dimension to the pad sound. Use EQ8 to cut the lows and boost the mids and highs. Use Dynamic Tube to introduce Vintage Breakup. Change the tube mode to B, the drive to 6 decibels, tone to 1, and bias to 50%. Now set the dry wet to 30%. Add some bit reduction with Redux. Set the rate to 20k, the bit amount to 6, and lower the dry wet to only 5%. Add erosion to further degrade the sound and slightly increase the stereo width. Set the mode to wide noise, frequency to 6K, width all the way up to 2.5, and the amount to 5. Now we'll crank up the stereo image using Utility. Set the width to 400%. To keep the low end central, turn on Bass Mono and set it to 220 Hz. Now let's put this sound in a space with echo and reverb. Add echo. Unlink the left and right channels. Change the right delay to dotted quarter. Set the feedback to 60%. Change the mode to ping pong so that the echoes bounce between the left and right channels. Set dry wet to 40%. Set the high pass filter to 150 Hz and the low pass filter to 2.5k with a resonance of 0.17. Switch over to the modulation tab. Change the sync rate to 4 bars and the filter modulation to 50%. Lastly, add hybrid reverb. Change the mode to parallel and the pre-delay to 5 milliseconds. Set the convolution to halls, rich verb, left right, and set size to 450%. Set the algorithm to shimmer which produces a reverb tail that is an octave higher than the incoming audio. Set the decay to 4.34 seconds, size to 60%, damping all the way down, modulation to 100%, stereo to 150%, and dry wet to 30%. Now switch over to the EQ and cut the lows to 297 Hz. In Ben Boomer's Beyond Beliefs, the pad is coupled with a high-pitched shaker or percussion sound. I used Ableton's hi-hat drum synth to add this element to the pad texture. Set tone to 
pitch to 92.1%, decay to 1.83%, the slope to 24, and the attack to 6.3%. I added a hybrid reverb to this sound with the dry wet set to only 10%. There are two distinct percussion sounds in Ben Boomer's Beyond Beliefs. One is slightly higher and panned left, and the other is slightly lower panned right. Use Ableton's cymbal drum synth to make these sounds. For the high sound, set the tone to 0%, the pitch to 100%, and the decay to 0.83%. This creates a very short high sound. To get a bit closer to the percussion sound and beyond beliefs, add frequency shifter. Set frequency to 2.1 kilohertz and the fine adjuster to 16 hertz. Now it is closer, but the sound needs to live only in the highs. Add EQ3. Deactivate the mids and lows. Set the frequency of the high band to 5.5 kHz. Now pan this sound 30 to the left. The lower percussion sound is very similar, but with a couple small changes. Change pitch from 100% to 75.6%. Activate the mid band and lower it by 12 decibels. Pan the sound 30 to the right. The main hi hat is created not with the hi hat drum synth, but with the cymbal drum synth. Set tone to 25%, pitch to 40.1%, and decay to 1.14. Use frequency shifter for a bit more definition. Set frequency to 352 Hz. Use EQ3 to cut the lows by 4 decibels, raise the mids by 2 decibels, change the high frequency to 5.5 kHz, and the low frequency to 216 Hz. I hope you enjoyed and found something useful in this video, and if you'd like to download the project file with all the presets and patches, you can do so on my Patreon page, which is linked below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.